This is by far my most ambitious project to date. I started this business, 80 Proof Goods, uh, about three years ago. A couple days ago, I just celebrated my three-year anniversary of starting the website uh, for 80 Proof Goods. And since the very beginning, I knew a duffel bag it was something that I really, really wanted to make. And it seemed, and it still seems, so incredibly daunting to me. I've made tote bags, dop kits, which are both bags, like they're both, you know, intricate, detailed products, but a duffel bag just seemed so big and so risky uh, that I kind of just kicked the can down the road for a really long time. Uh, finally, you know, July-ish, June or July of this year hit, I was approaching the three-year anniversary and I said, you know what, I think it's time. I'm looking to expand my product selection from mostly tech accessories. I do mostly watch bands and things like that, desk mats, uh, to something that seems a little bit more maybe sophisticated, uh, something on a bigger scale, something that you can use literally, you know, just forever. Uh, on, on weekend trips and going on a plane. I recently went to California. So there, a lot of inspiration has been building up to this moment here, making my first uh, duffel bag. Now this one you're seeing in the video isn't my first. Uh, this is maybe my third or fourth. Uh, I've been making them in a couple of different colors. My goal is to make one in every color that I have available in store. And this time around, it's olive green. So let me talk you through a couple of things that's going on here. Number one, I knew that I wanted my bag to be more high end. Uh, I think I make a lot of products that are kind of in the middle price point, uh, you know, something that's not cheap, but it's not the most expensive that it's breaking everyone's bank. I want it to be priced fairly uh, so that I was, you know, hitting the margin that I wanted to hit, but I also wanted to make sure it was affordable for most people. This bag here, I was shooting for a little bit more top end, something that had all of the bells and whistles that I would want out of a duffel bag, which meant I was putting it uh, at an aspirational point. Now this one here is going to be lined with a waxed canvas, and that's what you see me working on here. I also handpicked uh, zippers, the wax canvas colors, the finish, the stitching colors, and all of the hardware. Uh, I ordered a whole lot of each one of those things I just mentioned to really test out which ones I liked and which ones I didn't like, which ones fit uh, sort of the vibe and the aesthetic that I was going for for this duffel bag. Um, and I think I'm really happy with how it came out. So it's wax canvas lined on the inside. So all of the inside is stitched down wax canvas. Um, edges uh, at the zipper are rolled so they don't come apart. That's a really frequently uh, trafficked area of the bag is that zipper area. So I wanted to make sure that it didn't fray. Um, it's also skived at the gussets uh, so that uh, the gussets aren't super bulky and thick. They are, are more relaxed, but they're still durable. I also have one inch straps uh, that encompass the body of the bag, and that's what you're seeing here. I'm working on uh, taping that down and getting it prepped for the sewing machine. So all of that's stitched down. For the hardware, one inch uh, single and double loop sliders for the bags. The single loop sliders basically connect the handles to the bag itself and the shoulder strap to the extension that you'll see later on. That'll make sense a little bit later on. The double loop slider uh, allows for adjustments in the shoulder strap. So those are really, um, I don't want to say chunky. They're like thick and 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 uh, really rugged, durable. They feel high quality. I've ordered you know hardware over the years from Amazon that I've miscellaneously used throughout projects, um, and they always you know were good enough. But for this, I was really shooting for high quality, almost luxury sophistication. So I really went hard on making sure I was finding the right hardware for this project. And the uh, single loop and double loop sliders, they, I got them from Buckle Guy. They are not cheap um, and they, they really feel like that luxury I was going for. They feel high quality. Um, you'll know what I'm talking about if you ever pick one of these up from me. In addition to that, I got swivel snaps to hold the shoulder strap to the sides of the bag. Those are removable, obviously. It's like kind of like a keychain clasp. Uh, again, just really high quality stuff. All of the straps are one inch, so they're one inch hardware, pieces of hardware. In addition, there's also a front pocket. This was really important to me. I feel like uh, I, I use a backpack a lot, and the front pocket on my backpack is one of the most highly used pieces on the backpack. So I knew I wanted to transfer that over to the duffel bag. 
Um, you know, going to California recently, this kind of was inspiration because I would have liked to use a duffel bag like this for my carry-on. You throw, you know, your ID, your wallet in there real quick just so you can have it going for TSA. Um, and you can throw your passport in there if you're moving internationally. You can put your phone in there for quick access because a lot of boarding passes are, you know, right there on your phone. You want to have quick access to things when you're moving through places like the TSA, going through security and baggage check and all that stuff. Speaking of which, another thing that was really important is I knew I wanted this to be carry-on compliant. So this fits all um, international and, na and domestic flight carry-on regulations, which I believe is uh, 22 inches long by 11 inches tall. This is 21 to 21 and a half inches long and 10 inches tall, about 10 inches tall. So um, yeah, so it fits carry-on compliance, which is huge. You get to use it as a carry-on, um, which is very important as well. Okay, moving on. Hardware we talked about, interior we talked about, the pocket. Here what you're looking at is the gussets. Now, this is really what made bag making and duffel bag making in particular um, so daunting to me. Um, it, the gusset situation, I just could not wrap my head around. I don't know why. I had a really hard time for over the years. Like, it would almost get to the point where I was. it, it stressed me out so much that I just kind of, again, kept kicking the can down the road because I just wasn't sure I was good enough. Imposter syndrome was real for me when it came to bag making. Um, and I kind of got over that when I started making totes really frequently. They're a pretty big item at my shop. A lot of people order tote bags from me. So I got really used to like flipping bags inside out or right side, right side in, right side out. You know what I mean? Uh, so I was getting used to that. And finally, I just, you know, you just got to jump in. So I bought duck cloth to test out. So I didn't have to waste a bunch of leather. I used duck cloth to prototype. I got the sizes right, the dimensions right and uh, finalized everything through duck cloth and transferred that template onto leather. Um, and here uh, I made my first mistake, which I just ran with. Um, sorry, getting off track from what I was just talking about. I made a mistake. I put uh, tubular rivets, again, what I use uh, for this bag for all the stress points. I put the first one on backwards, uh, which, you know, they star out. If you're not using a cap on the tubular rivet, they star out, um, which typically you'd want on the inside. I accidentally, for the first thing, put it on the outside. And I was like, you know what? I actually kind of like this. It's unique. It's different. It's definitely going to stand out. It gives a little bit of a, it's almost like a pattern. What would be a solid antique brass cap is now sort of almost like a pattern on the, on the bag. Uh, it's got this star pattern. So it's cool. I thought it was neat. My wife is not a fan of this, but uh, going on in the future, I think I'm going to use a cap instead, but I, I think it looks pretty good. So at this point here, I'm, I'm working on uh, handles. So we've got the body of the bag, as you saw. I just flipped it, and it looks good. The gussets are correct. Everything looks good. Uh, so it's time to move on to kind of the final steps of the project, which is the handles. Now, the handles uh, are a process that you've kind of seen already. I did uh, extensions of the handles on the body of the bag. Um, so this is uh, familiar territory if you're with me, you know, for eight minutes that we're up into this video. So uh, kind of buzzing past that. I burnished the handles. I stitched the handles. They are double-sided. Uh, the, so the, le the finished side of the leather is on both sides of the handle. I wanted that to be really important. So it felt you feel that luxury. I don't want much interaction with the flesh side of the leather, the interior of the bag is wax line is canvas uh, wax canvas lined so you don't really see the flesh on that side the only place you actually see or feel the flesh side of the leather is in the front pocket and this little handle um, retainer handle clasp I guess I'll call it I made this thing uh, that I stitched to one of the handles so that you can snap the leather uh, handles together and hold them in place so they don't flop off to the side love this feature of the bag uh, I kind of was browsing the internet looking at other bags for inspiration um, I saw not all bags had this and I think it's a, an important piece I think otherwise your handles are kind of flopping all over this actually keeps your handles st standing upright um, so they're not flopping off the side of the bag. So I really like this part. The only thing I didn't do that I will do for the future is I will stitch these pieces down. Uh, right now they're glued and uh, the snaps are holding them in place, but in the future I'm going to stitch those down. Uh, so here I am finishing the edges for that guy, and I think this looks really good. Um, I'm setting it up to be dead center on the back handle, and I'm going to stitch that piece to the handle so it doesn't slide around. So this will always be a fixed piece of the bag that will hold your handles upright and hold them together if you uh, enclose them in this kind of snap um, retainer. So here I am putting the handles on, front and back, and I, again, use tubular, uh, the rivets to you know, fix these into place. You can see me making really good use of those single loop sliders that they're called, those antique brass pieces. 
all the hardware being antique brass, I think goes really well with this olive green bag. I finally got around to finding my attachments for my hand press, this, you know, uh, rivet setter. I think it's called a die setter or a rivet setter. Um, I, it was given to me by the guy I bought my sewing machine from years ago. I bought my sewing machine, my Cobra Class 26 sewing machine you've seen throughout this video. I bought secondhand on Facebook Marketplace, and the guy was just kind of giving away all of his leather stuff, all of his machinery, and he gave me the die setter with the sewing machine i was really grateful i just haven't gotten around to using it because i didn't really understand all the little bits and pieces that go with it but i finally did some research found what i needed to find and i was able to use that so here what we're doing back to the build here what we're doing is finishing the shoulder strap pad now this was something i wasn't sure i was going to use but once i finally finished making the actual shoulder strap itself uh, I was like, you know what, it needs a little pad for the shoulder. So I did that uh, using my Glowforge. I was able to laser cut that and have laser precise little slits. I'm sliding here on the double loop slider, which is going to allow for adjustments to be made in the shoulder straps. You can make it longer if you want it kind of hanging down, the bag hanging down by your hip. Or you can adjust it so that you can have it up a little bit tighter under your arm. Um, personally, I like to leave it at its longest adjustment. Uh, that's just my personal preference. If I'm going to use the shoulder strap at all, I'm going to have it kind of hanging down at my waist or a little bit lower than my waist. Um, and if, I, like I said, you can remove the shoulder strap because it uses swivel clasps or swivel snaps that you see right there on the ends uh, of the bag. They'll attach to antique brass D-rings. Um, yeah, so the, the interesting part about making the shoulder strap, um, this was the most stressful part, is that the Minerva series of leather that I'm using for this is imported from Italy and it only comes in half hides. And the half hide, I want to say, is like three to four square feet. So the, I couldn't get a long enough piece, so I had to make extensions that go on the left and the right side. So I added about five inches to each side in order to get the proper length that I wanted for the adjustable shoulder strap. Well, there you have it. You see a couple of maker's marks uh, on there with the whiskey glass. Uh, I wanted to make sure it was branded properly. Uh, I'm not offering customization for this in terms of laser engraving, but I am offering stitching colors that you get to choose so you can really make it your own. I hope you like it. Took a lot of guts for me to get up and actually do this, let alone show it off to the world in a video. Drop a comment and of course a like and a follow and a subscribe goes a really long way to help build my small channel.